My favorite part is um, like learning all the stuff that we get to taught and reading the Bible. Probably learning the most about God. The events that we get to do, particularly the Christmas play and the Kids Sunday. When the teacher would tell jokes in the beginning of class, that's always fun. Noah and the Ark. Noah and the Ark. And it's kind of cool how he, Jesus got all the animals to fit on one large boat and this man and his family made that boat. Because I love water and the ocean. I think Esther is kind of cool, honestly, that she was the one who actually got up the courage to talk to the king and that, yeah, he was, he didn't like kill her because she disobeyed him a little bit, so. I like how the teachers have different approaches to the way they teach, you know? Everybody does it a little bit differently, so you get to learn kind of all sides, which is cool. That he is the one true God and Almighty, he can do anything. He has been a good person and like probably saved lives and definitely has done great things. That he can like do anything to heal or like help poor people. Definitely with the ones with the vanilla cream and the little chocolate on top with also, with also the vanilla cream inside the donut. Those are delicious. Um, probably like a chocolate donut. Um, the big ones have like the cinnamon inside with the icing on top. My mom doesn't let me grab donuts usually. Because he's done good things in my life and he's going to continue to do more. Um, he's just a very nice person. Um, well, he decided to go through this enormous amount of pain and hurt because he's awesome. Let's thank our kids for helping us see how they're doing in church. Um, Every year we take a Sunday to celebrate what God has done in the previous year. And as best we can, we try to take a peek into the future of what we think God is going to lead us towards. And we want to be accountable. Every single leader in our church family knows that one day we'll stand before God and we will give an account for everything that he's entrusted to our care and every opportunity. But we also feel a sense of accountability to every single person who considers themselves a part of our church family. So today you're going to be exposed to quite a bit of information. And we freely share this information uh, about things like income and expenses because we want you to know how our church family honors the contributions that you have made. We're going to talk about... Uh, participation in various events, all of that today. And here's the risk of the day. The risk of the day is that when you're exposed to a lot of numbers, we can walk away with the impression it's all about the numbers. And uh, what I want you to know is every single number represents an individual. Every single individual has a name and a story. And that's what this is really about. Uh, For example, We have a prayer ministry. There's 161 of you are signed up, which means that every single week you get an email of all the prayer concerns that have been submitted for that week. One of them that we prayed for just recently, you'll probably remember, it's a little girl, not quite yet, two, whose name was Piper, and she was going to Boston to have heart surgery. It was was very risky, and there was a lot at stake. And uh, I wish you could have seen, or maybe you did, the video of the mom online when the, her little daughter came out of the surgery and for the first time in her slightly less than two year life, she actually had full use of her heart and she was a glorious color of pink. And that little girl is back home with her parents in the Rochester area today. Can we just say thank you to God for that? That's what I'm telling you, every single number we talk about today has a name and has a story. In the book of Acts, we're told that on the very first day that the church was kind of birthed into existence, that there were 3,000 people 
who decided to put their faith and trust in Christ and start a journey of faith on their own. Every single one of those people had a name. They were involved in real relationships. And what they discovered was a kind of life and a kind of love they didn't know was possible. Let me just read out of Scripture some of the language about this. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That means that they showed up for donuts that had chocolate on top and, and cream in the middle. They, they discovered that when they got together that, that life really worked better. And the teaching that they were hearing made God seem closer and more real. And that's really important. Then it says that everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostle because prayers were being answered. Sick people were recovering and marriages were becoming strong and children were being celebrated. It says all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. They were willing to give generously and sacrificially so that others could be cared for. That's a huge earmark of what it is to to step into a life of faith. Is that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts because when you break bread around a table together, you open your life together. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The more they celebrated God, the more people wanted to connect with God. It was just an amazing thing. Our, our church family is, is a local expression of that kind of church. Certainly, we're not the only one. Our, we're fortunate to have lots of churches in our community that are Acts 2 churches. And, and throughout our globe, there are always you'll be able to find communities of people who put their faith in Christ. And for them, church is not just about rituals or regulations. It's about relationships with God and with each other. And they're growing and developing in the discovery of who God has called them to be. So our church has also been growing. In fact, if you look at this slide, it shows that over the, uh, last, since 2005 until today, there's been ongoing growth. In fact, that's just from 2005 when uh, uh, myself and, and our family first showed up here for our very first Sunday uh, in this church. It was 1998. It was 21 years ago, the second Sunday in January. And there were less than 20 people in the church, including the children. That's absolutely amazing because as we have celebrated God, others have wanted to discover who God really is. And every single one of those individuals has a name and they have a story. And you keep inviting your coworkers and your family members and your friends and your neighbors to come and see for themselves. And it keeps making a difference. In fact, you'll notice some decisions. Every week, we have guests that, that fill out this welcome card. Not all of them do, but lots of them do. So we know that 319 first-time guests came and were part of our Calvary family. And some of those made a commitment. We know 111 people crossed the line of faith and decided to put their faith in Christ this last year. 65 people didn't just want to believe, they also wanted to belong. And they decided to make official their relationship with our church family. And every single one of them has a name. Every single one of them has a story. Some of them were raised in a family where there really was no connection to God or faith or church. And it just wasn't part of their environment. Others were raised in environments where maybe church was something that was more painful or difficult to get through. And they thought church was not for them. And over and over again, we've seen people find and make that connection. And they've discovered the grace of God freshly for themselves. So... Uh, we begin to, uh, when, we, when we become part of a church family like this, we begin to explore and to discover the amazing things that God has for us and the amazing ways that God can use us. For example, uh, almost 60%, almost 60% of those who regularly attend here volunteer their time in serving others. That is 415 people, active volunteers at Calvary Assembly. Every single one of those volunteers has a name. Every one of them has a story. Ninety of them decided to serve for the very first time last year. They decided to step out of their comfort zone and see if they could make a difference in someone else's life. 
they donated over 19,000 hours of volunteer service in 2018. If we were paying minimum wage, it would cost us almost $200,000 just to cover that amount. I think this would be a great opportunity for us just to thank God for the volunteers that he's given to us in this place. Amen. Amen. By the way, we're going to be applauding a lot today because as it turns out, this is a good news day. And uh, not only have people been generous with their time, they've also been generous with their resources. Last year, in 2018, you helped to contribute one million, I can't believe this number, one million four hundred sixty-three thousand and forty-three dollars into the ministries of Calvary Assembly. That is unbelievable. The first year that I was here, our entire budget, which included our mortgage, our utilities, our insurances, our ministries, and my salary was less than $70,000. It's just unbelievable what God has done over time. Absolutely unbelievable. We also know that 1,198,559 of those dollars were given in tithes and offerings, and that's what supports the ongoing ministries of the church. You know, we have very generous people, and when a crisis or an emergency erupts someplace, they just find some extra resources, and they release it to those things. That is so helpful for people in emergency. But it's also true that there's ongoing ministries that people can depend on every single week, and uh, that, that money helps to support our children's ministry, our student ministry, our college ministry, our senior ministry, our women's ministry, all these things that our church family is able to provide. By the way, um, 62,121 of those dollars were given to our overseas workers. They are individuals who have given their lives to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to discover the grace of God for themselves. They don't believe that your ethnicity or your education level or your income earning potential should ever act as a barrier to accessing God. And so they're willing to go places we probably would prefer not to go so that everyone has an opportunity. In fact, one of the very first missionaries we started to support, his name is Dwayne Danielson, and I'd like, I just did a, a quick interview with him. Actually, the interview was about 25 minutes. We're just going to show a couple of those minutes uh, with Dwayne Danielson this morning. Good morning. So I'm speaking with Dwayne Danielson, who is uh, one of the uh, overseas workers that we support. So uh, there obviously was a moment in time, uh, at least 21 years ago, where um, you decided to go all in on this idea that you would go somewhere people would prefer right. to go and, and serve. So if you could go back in time to that moment, would you still say yes? Yeah, if I, if I think back to how God was stirring me, you know, I think of the um, we just had last summer, you know, in, in Chiang Rai, Thailand, they had the kids that were stuck in the cave, you know, and they, the world was mesmerized by the fact that these kids are lost. And uh, it's, you know, and, it, and there was different levels of engagement about it. You know, there was all of a sudden you saw a ticker come up on CNN or Fox and you're like, you know, a soccer team is stuck in a cave. And, and so you're hearing blips here. So there was kind of this passive engagement that the world had and said, hey, we're, yeah, we're praying for them. We hope things work out. But then there was those people that said, okay, now we're gonna go try to rescue them. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. go in there. And and if you listen to the the one worker that, the one of the, one of the divers who's actually an AG TCK that grew up overseas, uh, he said, we fully expected casualties. We never expected for everybody to come out alive, you know, but they had this commitment that said, we're going in even with that kind of knowledge that it might not work. And there was that moment when God called me uh, in, you know, summer of 1987 and said, hey, Dwayne, I want you to do this for the rest of your life. And that was that commitment to kind of go into the cave and say, hey, let's do this. And I'll tell you, there's, there has been, in the sense, casualties because things don't always work out as you planned and hoped. And and it's, you know, just like uh, they, they lost the diver. There's things that have been sadness along the way of what you expect when you say, hey, we're going to do this for God. But 
there's something rewarding about coming out of the water and seeing the fact that, hey, we found the lost people. The thing that's challenging these last days too is that the world is so excited about social justice, social things. So let's get water to people. Let's get them free from trafficking. Let's All those things are great, but in the end, if they don't have Jesus, they don't have anything. So all that, you know, so all that we do, whether, and we do all those things that I listed, but it has to be coupled with the fact that the only rescue thing we can rescue someone with uh, spiritually that will matter is that they know the gospel and can understand that. Well, I want to add my voice to, I'm sure, a lot of voices that just say thank you for serving. Uh, thank you for hearing the call, but then processing in a way where you actually took some steps. And I'm grateful for the journey that you're on. It's impacted our church family and uh, it's helped us to become more aware and engaged. And uh, so I'm just very grateful for you and the ministry that you are engaged in, the serving that you do. Uh, please give your regards to all your, our regards to all your family. And uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And let me just uh, thank your church. Uh, you partnered with us from like the very beginning and uh, we've appreciated that. As you, as you look to the future, I, you know, God's gonna use you through prayer, God's gonna use you through your giving, but I, I think there's people sitting in the pews that God's stirring their hearts to say, hey, I'm gonna go into the cave, I'm gonna step out. And I would just challenge those that have been sitting there and saying, well, when things get, you know, certain things get in place, then I'll step out. Well, I think you just have to realize the urgency of the hour. You know, if they hadn't gone into that cave when they did, it would have been too late. And I think there's people all throughout America that God has already been stirring. And there's all a list of reasons why they haven't stepped out yet. But maybe today is the day that they would uh, step out uh, right there from the church and say, hey, it's time for me to go. Amen. Thank you so much, Dwayne. I really appreciate your time and uh, our prayers are covering you. God bless. Please give your best to everyone. All right. God bless. Take care. Yeah. Dwayne is the guy that started Aki's Place. Our church family gave over $13,000 to Aki's Place last year. If you don't know what that is, it's a place in Bangladesh where uh, children who would have been uh, caught in the human trafficking situation have been provided a place to live where they have food and they have clothing and they have an education all the way through college. And they have options just because someone believes that the gospel of Jesus Christ can make a difference in every part of our life. And what I want you to know is that we support over 25 missionaries all over the globe that are doing that kind of work. When you give to Calvary Assembly, you don't just give to this building or this ministry. You are giving to make a difference around the world. And that means a lot to us. Uh, by the way, uh, you've also given um, a, a lot of other ways. In, in outreach, I'm actually a little off my slides, I think. So let me go back. I think you're fine up there. I just am not fine over here. I will get where I'm going. All right. So in serving others, 165 uh, Operation Christmas boxes were given out. That's an increase of 100. People couldn't believe that we were that generous last year. 90, over 90 angel tree gifts were given away. 93 oil changes in our community for people who are struggling financially or their single parent moms or their spouses of uh, people who serve in our armed forces. And uh, our church family, because we know transportation is essential, we set up a ministry so that we could change the oil in their car so that their car could continue to run safely. Uh, 213 people at Calvary Assembly contributed for the first time last year. For the first time, they, they opened their hands and just to see what God might do with what they entrusted to his care. 127 of you actually give online, which is both safe and convenient because uh, you want to create opportunities for God to use resources even if you're not able to be in the room on any given day. I think it's astonishing what God has done with the resources that we've entrusted to his care. I also want to talk to you, though, a little bit about how we strategically use that, because it's one thing to know what we've received. I think it's fair for you to know what we have given as well. 
And here's our expenses. Last year, we spent uh, $924,571 of the money that you generously contributed to us. 144,974 of those dollars were used in ministries. That's kids, youth, outreach, deaf, seniors, college, and on and on, because we honestly believe that every age and every stage of life needs to be supported, connected to not only God, but to followers of God as well. And you gave 70,000, or we gave $70,021 to missions. Now, if you remember a previous slide, you're going, I thought we received 62,000, and you said you gave 70,000. Yes, we always give more to missions than we receive. Right now, I have missionaries we would love to support, and uh, they're doing astonishing work. And as our capacity to uh, serve them goes up, we just keep releasing resources to them. Uh, we use $89,548 to take care of our facility. Uh, that's our mortgage payments, our utilities, our insurances, the maintenance, the, all the things that we have to do to make sure that this is a, a safe place. And we used $478,587 on salaries. And uh, somebody says, are you the only person who works here? And, <laughs> and the answer is no. This, this is astonishing to me, all right? We have... 21 people on staff at Calvary Assembly. We have more people on staff right now than were in the church in 1998 when we came here. That's unbelievable to me. Now, we have a commitment that we don't reveal individual salaries uh, to people, uh, even our church families. So what our pastoral staff or, or what our administrative staff, uh, what our custodial staff makes, uh, those are private matters, just like you would want your salaries to be private. But this is what I can tell you. Every year for this meeting, I bring my W-2. Uh, there's a little desk chair up here. It's there. And you are welcome to stop by and look, and you can know exactly what I made from Calvary Assembly in 2018. The only thing I blacked out was my Social Security number so that no one can steal my identity <laughs> and, and spend that money. I'm very grateful for the incredible staff that we have. So we have, uh, th this is our uh, account uh, balances. We have uh, $534,026 in checking. You might think, well, that's a lot of money in checking. Shouldn't that be in savings or in investments? And the answer is that's where it was. We've recently moved it into checking because in the spring of this year, we will break ground on our new expansion, uh, next expansion facility. And so we're going to need access to those resources and we can't have them tied up in investments. Uh, in savings, we have uh, $84,235, and in M&T Securities, we have $507,354, which means we have in assets right now $1,125,915. How many can just thank God for the amazing <laughs> grace he's given to us? Now, you, you might say, well, that's a lot of money to have on hand. Shouldn't we be using that in ministry? And what I will tell you is it will all be used in ministry. Uh, I can also tell you that because we have a strong financial position, we have been able to uh, negotiate remarkable terms, very generous terms from loaning institutions for our next uh, project. When they see how we handle business, they want to do business with us. And so I'm very grateful for just the wise counsel of our spiritual leaders and those who oversee our, fi our finances. And by the way, just in case you don't know, uh, every single month uh, our church council gets together and they review our income and they review every expense. This is not just an annual event. We stay on top of all of our finances all year long. Uh, uh, they've been incredibly wise stewards of these resources. So I'm very grateful to God for their wisdom and their willingness to serve with that kind of diligence. Now, in addition to that, we also have ministries like our college ministry. And our college ministry, you know, a lot of times we're told that college students are not interested in Christianity or faith or spirituality, that they kind of check out at least for that season of their life. One of the great gifts God has given our church family is just an influx of amazing college students and young adults. And while our culture tells us they're not interested, our experience is quite different than that. We are discovering that God is doing amazing work in their lives. In fact, I'd like them to tell you some of their own stories. To really understand the love of God and to kind of be 
um, just to be interactive with that um, in a radical way, I think is what drew me to God and is what continually draws me to God, is just how loving he is and how he relentlessly comes after us. I think seeing the transformative power of God's grace in my life um, and also his purpose, um, just seeing people who may have infuriated me before, just looking at them as just broken messes and seeing humanity in places I didn't expect um, was just amazing to experience. I think there was a, a color and a depth in life that I was just missing before. I love that God, like first and foremost, like loves me. Um, without any stipulations and without any conditions. Um, there's nothing that I can do um, to make him stop loving me, um, which is something that like I've struggled with in relationships like my whole life. It's like, what, you know, like some, I'm gonna do something and like then they're gonna like stop loving me and like leave me. Um, so I, I think like first and foremost, that's like the biggest thing is like, you know, God, like I can do like, you know, really anything and he's still gonna call me his child and like call, call me back to him every single time, regardless of what I do. I really love the faithfulness of God, and even though I am a human, and I'm a sinner, and I can constantly mess up and do things that I just wish I wouldn't do, I know that even in spite of those things, God will always forgive, and He's always there, and I'm never not enough, um, because He loves me as I am, and so I think that the faithfulness of God is what constantly draws me back to Him, and is what makes me want to be faithful to him um, just because he is always so faithful to me. Not defining myself by my failures but like looking at God and God saying like no like you are not your failures you are like who I've created you to be. For each and every day I know that no matter what happens like I have a God who loves me and I have a God who gives me a purpose and no matter what life throws my way that at the end of the day it's just he and I and it'll be that way forever. I think that God's hope has given me hope not only in the days right now, but also like for the days ahead, too. So every single one of them are going to take jobs in companies, and they're going to start businesses, and they're going to get married, and they're going to have children, and they're going to make friends. And the grace of God has influenced them on the beginning of that trajectory, and the outflow of that in terms of potential for life is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. So I'm so grateful that they're part of our church family. One of our growing ministries right now is also our deaf ministry. In fact, we've actually launched a new website for our deaf ministry because I don't know if you realize this, the second highest per capita community of any city in the United States of deaf people is Rochester. And yet there's so little opportunity for ministry in a place where that demographic is incredibly well represented. So our deaf ministry has been continuing to grow. In fact, we've added our second life group for deaf ministry. All of, uh, we started a new website just for our deaf ministry at Calvary Assembly so that we can use that to reach out into our community. And all of our messages can be accessed through YouTube online and they have closed captioning available. And in fact, some of our deaf community actually wanted to share some things with you this morning. Let's take a, a look. <laughs>
Uh, I'd like us right now just to applaud like the deaf community applause, in case you don't know. Yeah, it's like this. There, there's quite a few that know that. That's great. I'm so grateful for what God is, is doing in the uh, community. In addition to that, uh, our church family has, is making use of the tools that are available to us. Uh, in addition to the folks who attend here in a service on Sunday, we average over 200 people who will live stream our services and watch it wherever they are. Uh, this is a great day to live in. I know people talk about the good old days. Uh, I think now is pretty good because there's so many ways to share and to invite. Um, there's another thing, and that is uh, this year, our, or last year, our church family decided that uh, we needed to expand our facilities. And uh, of course, that's going to cost a fair amount of money. Um, when Commitment Sunday came, uh, the amount that was committed over the next 36 months was $1,172,483 to expand our facility. I think that's a really good place to thank God. That's just unbelievable. I don't think I will ever forget those vision nights when we got together and we ate good food and we dared to dream big dreams and to pray bold prayers. And then there was worship. It wasn't anything big or it was just an acoustic guitar and, a, and Ben leading us out. And this room was just filled with the sound of praise. Uh, 288 adults made a commitment. Uh, that pretty much represents a family because if you and your spouse made a commitment, we only count one of you. 41 students and children made commitments to our capital campaign. With what little resources they had, they've already figured out that helping others find out about God is not limited by the age you are. That they want to see their friends come to Christ too. And when we had our commitment Sunday, it's a day that I will not be able to forget. I soaked my shirt with it. With the tears that streamed down my face because people kept walking up with names of individuals they want to see influenced by the grace of God and that it wasn't just words they were they were willing to contribute to help to commit and I'm so proud of our church family that our hospitality is not limited by the size of our facility but by the depth of our heart and if we didn't have enough room we were willing to make more room because we realized if we didn't create more space it would change who we are that we're outreach oriented we're welcoming we're inviting and if we don't have some more seats we can't be or do that anymore and so we just decided we were all in on that so creating more space Unbelievable. And we plan to break ground in the spring of this year. And uh, the space we're in right now is actually going to be converted to two stories of children's ministry space. So that our crowded classrooms right now, kids will have even more space to be able to grow and invite their friends. And this last year, we also hosted another kids ministry conference so that people could be trained up in ministering and serving our children. And our second youth ministry our students are so confident in who God has created them to be and their desire to share life and spirituality with their friends that 117 new students actually came to our youth ministries in the last year. Flower City Work Camp is when our students take their spring break and donate their time and their energy to make a difference in the inner city of Rochester and to partner with other churches and other youth groups. And we had 56 students who gave up that entire week. By the way, when they go, they also have to give up their technology, their cell phones. And just imagine, I mean, that, for some people, some adults, that would be a cross too great to bear, but, but they give it up. 51 adult volunteers. In our life groups last year, 242 people are connected in life groups. In membership class, we actually have more people attending our, our exploring membership classes now than were in the church when we came 21 years ago. Women's ministry, young at heart, it just goes on and on. Currents, I mean, uh, there were three events in 2018 and the average attendance was over 300 people who could have stayed home and done something else or done nothing else, but their heart is attracted to Christ and they wanted to lift their voice and pursue his presence passionately. And those are the kinds of things that make a huge difference in our life. This is what I know, is that we are part of a church family that understands 
that God has done amazing things, but the best is still yet to come. And with God, there's always an next. That our, des- our best days are not behind us. Our very best days are still out in front of us. And there are still lots of people who can be reached with the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And the moment grace influences their lives, it changes everything. It always does. It never fails. So I'd like us all to stand this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for entrusting us with so much. Thank you for giving us this amazing opportunity. Would you help us never lose sight of who you are or what you've called us to do? In Jesus' name, amen.